All right, so my buddy Joel is here today uh, from Jefferson Electric, and we're going to be moving our electrical service. Illegally. Illegally. Um, hopefully we don't die. Nobody dies. I brought the high voltage gloves. We're good. Let's have some fun. Let's go. Let's break ground. Where do you want the dirt? All right, guys, so what's happening here is this area is where our addition is going, where the kitchen's going to go. And the excavator's coming on Monday to remove all this dirt. But that electrical service is in the way, so Joel's already hard at work digging it out, trying to move it so we can, you know, put an addition in. Let's go. It's your funeral. It's like a 16 pair boat line, and there it goes. Okay, so the plan here is to move the electrical service onto a pole about 15 feet away from where it is now so that we can excavate for the addition and have temporary power during the renovation. Now we have been trying to schedule a disconnect with our electrical company for weeks now with no success and I just couldn't wait any longer. Everything we have going on with this addition is planned around this service being moved. Without any other options, I suggested we just move it under power and call it a day. And Joel looked at me like I stole this puppy or something. But being such an awesome friend and understanding the situation, he agreed. Under one condition that no one dies. So the first thing we need to do is dig down where the existing service wire comes into the box. We initially thought it was going to be underground conduit, so we were pretty amazed when we realized it was not encased in anything. But luckily for us, this made our job way easier. All right guys, so we have the trench pretty much all dug up and the post is right where Joel is kind of still digging away, make sure we have it deep enough. We're gonna set it in concrete, but next we're gonna pull that service off of the wall and get it and then we're gonna pull that wire live um, and hopefully we don't die, huh? Nobody dies today. It's not on Joel's watch. Let's go. Well, that's at least the plan. I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I am so scared of electricity, especially high voltage like this. But Joel had all the confidence in the world, which calmed me down a little bit. So the big guys right here coming in, that's the utility line side. Make the connections right there. That's live right there, it's 240 volts and virtually unlimited power coming off these terminals right here, that's customer side. So we're gonna pull the meter, remove those wires, pull customer side out of there, and then get this cabinet peeled back across the yard about 20 feet and planted back in the ground. Nobody dies. Let's go move that thing. Yeah, he's gonna move it, and uh, if he gets zapped, he's gonna frickin' shovel to the face. Knock me out. <laughs> to the face. Okay. Without a friend you trust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After disconnecting the meter to break the connection, Joe pulled out what he called his no zap zap gloves, and uh, I know that safety comes first, guys, but I just couldn't help myself. I thought it was super funny. You look like you're getting ready for your prostate test. <laughs> so the neutral doesn't have anything on it, right? Right. You okay. can get killed off the neutral, but not if the power's de-energized. So we turn off the main inside, pull the meter. Okay, so what you pulled away, that's what goes into the house. Yep. Right? Those are my connections to the house. Yes. Are you touching that wire? Did you just touch that wire? You're touching the wires. Oh my God, Joel, you're touching them. Ouch! Stop it. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. He's freaking me out. For some reason during this entire project, Joel thought he was a comedian. But honestly, I think he sensed the stress in my voice and just wanted to make a little light of the situation to reassure me that everything was going to be okay. But in hindsight, if I was to do this again, I would plan it way better to make sure that the power is de-energized properly and we can do this safely without any issues. 
but we were able to get the surface disconnected without any problems and can now move the box and pull all the ground wires out of the way of the excavation area. Now this is just temporary, right? And I'm going to need to pull that post out of the ground when all the work with the construction is done. And I didn't want to just set the entire thing in concrete. We first packed half of the hole with dirt just to make sure that post stays in place while we're working around it. And then I can take a bag of fast setting concrete and just dry pour over it. This will harden up in about 30 minutes. So Joel and I went to grab a quick lunch and when we came back, we were ready to start coiling that wire around that pulse. Now the reason why we're doing this is because that wire is hot right now. It's, it's energized, we could not cut it. So that's why we're coiling it all the way around. And then we can stand that box up against the post and secure it in place with a couple of construction screws. Are you ready? Okay, one at a time. Next, we needed to pull the wires that connected the surface box to the electrical panel inside the house, and that was fairly easy. But to get the conduit out, I did have to bring out my sawzall and cut a portion of the house away. And in the course of it, I cut through one of my drain lines, but it's getting replaced anyway, so no harm, no foul, and we're moving forward. Now we need to bring the new wires that will connect the box to the panel inside the house. So I drilled a four inch hole in our siding and started passing them to Joel who was inside pulling on them. And the siding is gonna get replaced just like everything else in this house. So I'm not too worried about putting in a couple extra holes to run this temporary wiring. All right, so we were able to pull the new wires through the old hole and they just run up in the ceiling. They Coming through here, this is my mechanical room. And right now they're just laying out there and that's the hole that we put them in through. Now we can connect the wires to the panel. And at this point, there's no current running through them because they're not connected to the service box yet. But I still felt that this process should be left to the professionals. And Joel just told me to go outside and remove the original grounding rod so we can actually use it at the new location and have everything properly grounded. <laughs> it's in there. Right, so now we have that pole set. We're trying to ground it and uh, trying to get this grounding wire out. And it's uh, pretty far deep in there. <sighs> Ten years ago, I would have pulled it out. Now I'm going dig. Let's go! Oh. Yes. Yes. Hey, for my <laughs> that's like 10 feet. It's only good 10 by 5.8. It's huge. Oh, man. Whoa. Careful, careful, careful. <laughs> uh, we said don't die today, but day's not over yet. Because this rod is so tall, I just ended up using my hand tamper to get it started. Sometimes you just have to use what you have, and I didn't have a post driver, but we were able to get it into the ground, and it was time for what I think is probably the most dangerous part of this process, and that's connecting the panel wires to the already hot service box. And again, Joel took every precaution he could, wearing his no zap zap gloves and a face shield, to make sure that nothing out of the ordinary happens and got everything secured in place and ready to get energized. But before flipping that switch, I started to dig a small trench that we can then drop the exposed wires into and Joel finished up the installation by putting the cover on and setting the meter back into place. And now there's only one thing left to do. All right, let's see if we did our job right. Just this one, right? Just that yeah, one. Just that one. Ah! Woo! Look at that. And that, my friends, is how you set up temporary service. You know, legally, illegally, however you want to call it. But huge thanks to Joel for doing this. And now we can actually excavate the whole foundation on the back side of the house for our addition. So make sure you guys check out Electrical Pro Academy on YouTube and Jefferson Electric on Instagram. That's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know down below and I'll see you guys next time.